In this video, I would like to show you how to display the data from a database inside the body of a web page. In this example, we are using three columns from the city table of the world database. We are limiting the number of rows to 100 because there are over 4,000 rows in the city table. I will place the data inside an HTML table. In this HTML table, the header column here was not generated from the database. I created the table heading names. However, the rest of the data has come from the database. If you look at the source code, you can see how nicely the data from the database has been placed inside the HTML elements. That was done by using PHP. Before you actually develop the code to retrieve the data from the database, you want to hard code the HTML web page so you know what it's supposed to look like with the data. Don't try developing the web page with PHP. Develop the table or any other HTML elements first, style them, make sure the web page looks as you wish, and then generate the PHP code based on that existing layout. Let's take a look at the PHP code. The first thing we do is we make the connection to the database. And I am using the shortcut here. I am passing just three variables to my PDO object. I have combined the server name, which is localhost, and the database name, which is world, inside one variable dollar DNS for data source name. I also have placed the username and password in a variable. If your username or password is different, you need to change it in these sample files or the files will not work. I am now using the try catch statement to make sure that my connection is successful and I have left in the echo just so that I can see it. Next, I will write my SQL statement, which I have already developed in PHP My Admin or another interface so that I know that my SQL is correct and that I am getting the results that I want. I would like to point out that PHP is case sensitive, so you want to make sure that your column names and table names are spelled exactly as they are in the database. Even though I am not using a parameter, I am still using a prepared statement. So I use the prepared method and the execute method. I am also going to retrieve the row count. It will help us to know whether we have retrieved records or not. You don't want to try to display data when there are no records to be displayed. I am executing the row count method on my statement object here and I have a test echo statement just to show me the row count. Now we see the, the beginning of our HTML document, which was already created before we added the PHP. You typically see the PHP code inside the body for this type of application, although it is possible to develop it in the head section using variables. I start out with an if statement determining whether or not I have any records to be returned. So my if condition is checking the row count variable to see if it's not equal to zero. If it's not equal to zero, it means that I have at least one record to be displayed. In the else clause, I will give a message to the user telling them that there were no results to be displayed. At the end of it all, I close my connection. That is accomplished by setting the connection object to null. So let's take a look at the code that actually is generating the table. The header row is purely echo statements with HTML and text. Notice at the end of every line, I have my escape characters so that my source code looks nice. Next, I am executing the fetch all method on the statement object 
storing that result, which is an associative array, in the variable dollar rows. Now I have my for each statement because a for each loop works with associative arrays. So here I have for each dollar rows, which is my variable which holds all of the array values as dollar row. Dollar row represents the item in the record in a specific column. So every column in every row will return a specific value. We first have an echo statement which creates our opening TR element. Notice we have our escape characters after all of our HTML. Next we have an echo statement that begins the first TD. We are concatenating the TD element with dollar row bracket name. That is the name of a column in the database. That will return the value for that column in the first record. Now we are concatenating the ending TD and we are also adding our escape characters. So we have placed the value for the name column in the first record inside a TD element. We will do the same for the next column. So we have an echo statement creating our opening TD element. We are concatenating it with dollar row and in bracket country code. Country code is the name of the column in the database. This expression will return the value in the first record. We then concatenate the ending TD and the escape characters. So we have just created our second TD, which contains the value for the country code column. We do that one more time for our third TD, and we use dollar row bracket population and we place the value for the population column inside this TD. We have one more echo statement which ends our table row, our ending TR element. And we have our escape characters to add extra space between each TD. So this for each loop will run 100 times because we set a limit of 100 and one by one it will create 100 rows Every row will have three columns, three TD elements, and the values of those TDs will be taken from the values for those columns in the city table. Finally, we end our table element. Process is very similar to retrieving form data. Rather than using dollar underscore post and the name of the element, we use dollar underscore row and the name of the column. Dollar underscore row representing the variable that holds those values. So here we see the result. And in the source code, we see exactly how the values were being placed inside the HTML elements.